Donate to support this ministry. Go to www.sbcberlin.org and click on the Give button. Select the Watcher's Report. Email your questions to the Watcher's Report at MediacomBB.net. Watch us on Boxcast.tv on Roku, Apple Play, Amazon platforms. Search for Faith Baptist Church and select the Watcher's Report channel. Watch us at www.fbcberlin. Click on the gold live stream button. Now, it's time for the Watcher's Report. Welcome everyone to the Watchers Report. It's our bi-weekly report here at, uh, at Faith Baptist Church in Berlin with my friend Pastor David Diskin and uh, we have an exciting program for tonight. Tonight we're going to be focusing on Pastor David, <coughs> the grand delusion that they're planning and uh, you know a lot of the truth is beginning to surface and of course the dutiful media, uh, prop propaganda media is doing all it can to cover things up. But uh, sooner or later, you know, the truth, you can't suppress the truth forever. And uh, that's going to make these people very desperate. And uh, they cannot go on the defense because the moment they do, they're dead because the evidence against them is overwhelming. So we're entering a very, very, very dangerous time, I think, for our, for our republic uh, here. And uh, so we've seen a lot of damage done to the Constitution mm -hmm. already. And, uh, and so we know they, they are telegraphing what they're planning, so we're going to talk a lot about that tonight. Uh, we've been engaging in our countdown clock. We're down to 54 seconds, Pastor David, before midnight. We've been counting down for 1,526 days towards this window, this window of expectation. Isn't it amazing, though, that, you know, 1,526 days ago, we started this countdown, and look where we're at. Right. And we're at this critical juncture. A couple things have happened. Oh, yeah, quite a bit. You know, and I mean, everything's lining up when you look at AI, the digital currency, what's going on with China, the kings of the East, Israel, Iran, Persia, Russia, the Ukraine war, uh, the election, uh, COVID-19, just all this stuff. Even the Euphrates River drying up. Right, the Euphrates I mean, ri River. so many things. Right. Yeah. In China, I was watching a report the other day, China is actually diverting water from the Yellow River uh, in, into its inner cities and stuff like that. And so there's a definite water, water shortage in China and things like that. Uh, so things are really critical. China is doing everything it can to remove the United States as being the reserve currency. If that takes place, look out. Uh, the coming of the digital currency is going to close the gate on the corral. And once that's in place, along with the technology, AI, transhumanism, all this stuff, uh, they're, tr they're trying to make gods of themselves, trying to promise people eternal life, you know, in a technological way. I, this is such, just sick stuff sure. that is going on. So all this is taking place. It's going to reach critical mass. The United Nations, we're going to be talking about that tonight. The WHO organization, they are trying to gain sovereign control over the next pandemic that the world is planning, all right? Because the last one was so successful, uh, they're, they're going to bring it about again, and, and it may not be the only thing that they're planning. So uh, we are down to 85 days uh, to September 30th, the Feast of Tabernacles. And uh, we, I believe that this fall, when we enter the Feast of Tabernacles, we're going to see the world change very dramatically. Uh, in the United States, the political scene is going to heat up because of the presidential election. The things that are going on with the police state 
you know, the politicalization of the Justice Department, the FBI, they're slow rolling it on an anything to do with Hunter Biden and the Bidens, but when it comes to Trump and any of his associates, it's bam, 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 quickly uh, into court and all, all of that. It's a two-tier justice system, it's out of control, and, we, and it's no longer a government of its people by its people. Everything this government is doing, it's doing at the behest of the new world order, the world, the globalists and what they want. Everything we're doing in the United States right now is, is fulfilling a globalist agenda. The environment, uh, the agenda, all of that is part of the New World Order agenda. The United Nations, the Vatican, all of that, they're all signed on. And the Bible paints that picture perfectly. That's right. What more can we say? Yeah. And, uh, and so we're going to blow through this first part really quick because we went through all this uh, the last time we met. And we talked a lot about the things that are coming and we went through this chart and basically saying that, you know, this snap event is coming. I believe the rapture of the church is coming and uh, I believe the battle of Ezekiel uh, 38 and 39 is coming in conjunction. All that's going to happen at once. God is going to intervene. And, you know, I was reading through Ezekiel 38 and 39 again this week and one of the things that amazed me, uh-oh, I hope we don't lose power because we have a lightning storm. We just had a, a tinge there, so be prepared. Uh, so anyway, uh, but the world is moving to this place and uh, where all this is, is coming together. Uh, Iran is threatening with the bomb. Israel is talking about making a move. Uh, and the United Nations is threatening Israel, of course, to move into Janine this past week. They're talking about war crimes again against Israel. It just never, never ends. And so Israel uh, needs to stand. And it's going to take a stand. And they're actually talking about they will not, they're saying they will not let Iran get the bomb that they will act before that becomes a reality. Of course, they have to. The, where, where is Iran concerning that as far as Israel is concerned? They're not saying, and of course they're not. But everything is as the Bible says, and uh, we're in the season of his coming, and the only thing that can save us. So we talked about this calendar, this, this 247 day window of heightened expectations, starting on September 30th, and we'll go all the way through, uh, through Pentecost of June 12th, in the year 2024, uh, that's the window that I've been talking about. That's what we're looking at. And of course, of course, Purim is on the 23rd of March. On the 23rd of April is Passover. And on the 12th of June is the Jewish uh, Shabbat or Pentecost. Uh, the, the, the Christian church celebrates Pentecost on the 19th, but the Jewish calendar is the one that, that I think we need to follow. So that window, uh, and I think between so between t from Tishrei 1, uh, and September 30, at the beginning of the Feast of Tabernacles, on to Pentecost, that window, I really expect the world to be dramatically changed. And uh, I, I don't know what exactly is coming. Is it going to be another, another uh, pandemic? Is it going to be a false flag of a UFO alien invasion? Is it going to be another war? Uh, or a global war? The answer may be yes. It may be all three of those. And that is exactly what the, uh, the fourth seal of Revelation talks about, and that is what's up on the, on the skew. So last week we talked about all these volcanoes and why that was important. And the, uh, I was talking to a friend who was in astronomy. He said he was notice, noticing the moon is, is, uh, is a blood red as it comes up over the, over the horizon. That's because of all the smoke that's in the air already. And of course, that... Uh, points to the, uh, the prophecy in, in the Revelation chapter 6 concerning the sixth seal, the sun being darkened, moon being turned to blood red before the great and notable day. Last week we talked about the grand delusion, the great deception that is taking place, and that delusion is going to be coming, and I gave a contemporary warning uh, to America and to the world. We talked about how the eradication from prayer, the Bible, Ten Commandments and all that was not just a coincidence, it was a planned uh, event. Uh, it is happening because we have become ignorant of the tricks of the devil, Satan himself. We have placed our hope in man instead of God. And boy, is that true more than ever with the transhumanism, technology, and everything else. And, uh, and so we're, we're seeing all this stuff, and uh, we've placed our hope in foolishness of riches. We have come to fear the coming of the environmental apocalypse uh, of envir environmentalism, climate change, rather than the apocalypse found in the book of Revelation. That's Partly where we left off uh, yesterday, we warned people uh, the day after day on uh, TV, we're, we're seeing we're, we're being inundated uh, with a new narrative. 
And I said, I fear that the world is quickly arriving at the place where only the coming of Jesus equipped with a rod of iron to smash to pieces those nations of the world that have united themselves against the truth of the Bible and have instead shackled themselves to the big lie. And uh, our job here at the Watchers Report is to do all we can to stand for the truth, stand against that which is spiritual wickedness. We need to put on the whole armor of God. Now, uh, the battle is the Lord's, and he alone will defeat all the enemies of truth. He will defeat the wicked one, and, uh, with the one breath of his mouth, according to Second Thessalonians. So that's where we left off last week. I want to begin this week with a passage from Ezra chapter 8. And I was talking uh, about this passage to my wife, mentioned it to some of our officers tonight in the business meeting. But this passage, Pastor David, is when Israel came back after the captivity. Ezra is preaching a message, and uh, they had laid the foundation of the temple. And there was a, uh, a mixed crowd there. It was a new generation and the elder generation. And uh, it says in verse number 12 that many of the priests and the Levites and the chiefs of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes wept with a loud voice and many shouted aloud for joy. So well, there, was, there was this mixed crowd there. And what was happening is that they were unveiling the new foundation from the new temple and a lot of people were excited. Yeah, the, the, the foundation is laid, but the ancients that were there knew the foundation of the old temple and they knew it was nothing compared to the, the old one. And so they were weeping because because they have lost so much. Right. I read this passage, and I was thinking about this passage, and I think it's pretty much the way it is for the young generation now. They do not know what church used to be like. They don't know what the Bible camps were like. They don't know what the tent meetings were like. They didn't know all of that when the church was alive and, and the contemporary uh, music had infiltrated the church. Uh, they, didn't under, they, they don't know a world without evolution and the challenge New evangelicalism brought to the and the change and how it challenged fundamental Christianity, and and all of it, uh, the charismatic movement, Pentecostalism, the entertainment, Hillsong, the contemporary Christian music has redefined the church to this generation, and to them, the church that they look at, they do not have a clue. They do not understand what they have lost. Much like in this passage, only the older. Christians, the older ones who lived that time, which I'm one of those, can see the change that has come about in the church, and it saddens me. It's true. You know, that's a good analogy because yeah. it really has become so. I was talking to someone out on campus. Uh, we went to the UMS campus the other day and talked to another lady, and she was, you know, we were talking, and she was saying also how watered down, you know, she said watered down Jesus has become. Right. I was like, you can't water down Jesus. I said, but you can water down His message. Right. He is who He is, and that's that's what's happened. It's it's we look at it as diluted. Right. The younger crowd looks at it as normal. Right. Because we know what it's supposed to be. Right. They don't, and I don't blame them for that. Right. They are just. I, I, I blame people my age right. how they've raised their children. I don't blame the kids, the younger right. people. They're, that's they're, right. It's normal to them. That's my wife right. and I talk about this all the time. That's right. They don't know any better. She that's talks right. to them all the time. Yeah, we did this, we did this, we did this, we did this. I mean, they're showing Michael Jackson in their big churches, singing right. Man in the Mirror and things right. like this. Right. The song says you have to look in the mirror and you have to make a change. There's no God involved and he's a suspected pedophile. And you have this, you're glorifying this stuff in your right. churches. Right. And they're screaming for it. And they think right. it's normal, though. Right. And you can't go to them and say, that's wrong. And they look at you and I like we're dinosaurs. Right. They see T-Rex and a brontosaurus when right. they look at you and I. So. Right. But uh, not, we're not going to compromise the Word of God. And though if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? That's right. And the foundations have been destroyed. They've been rooted out and pulled up and plucked up. And, and the reason why the world is going the way it's going, because we're in a post-Christian era, uh, and the authority of the Word of God, and power of prayer, all that has been rooted out. And so, uh, and you know, in Gary Kaw's newsletter, a uh, fantastic article, read it cover to cover. One of the things that in one of the last articles in here talks about the challenge for us as Christians is not just to convince people that there is a God, but to convince them that our God is more powerful than their pagan gods. Hmm. You know, because they are giving themselves wholly over to these, these pagan ideas. And, uh, and it's, it's really is a sad state of affairs that we find ourselves in. All right. In, in John, in John, 1 John chapter, chapter 4, verse 1, we read the following. Pastor David. John writes, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye that the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, 
is of God, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God, and this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us, hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Boy, that last phrase in there, here's how we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And so you and I, as believers, and knowing the word of God and following the spirit of truth, you know, when COVID-19 hit, we knew what was going on because the spirit of God revealed it to us. We knew exactly what that was. We knew it was a tool and we would not submit to it. Uh, and so it's very simple. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And Jesus Christ has come. He is God in the flesh. And you can't say that except by the Spirit of God. But the world, the world we are living in is an antichrist world. And, and I say, say to people, the people that are ruling right now are anti, they're anti-God, they're, they're anti-law, right? And they're reprobates. And they're the ones that they're, they're godless and they are lawless and they are reprobates. And they, uh, they don't care about the truth. Uh, they have their own agenda, their own narrative, and the only thing that matters to them is how they can get to the next step of, of accomplishing their goals. Truth doesn't matter. Uh, how to do it, that's, that's what they are all about. And so, but that's the time we're living in, and it's a very dangerous time. But uh, we're not to believe the spirits, but we're supposed to try them. Similar passage, John 8, 38, Pastor. Yeah. John says, I speak that which I have seen with my father and do that which you have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus saith unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he that sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. And that's where it is right now. It's clear. That the people that are of God, we know the truth, and we know what's going on. But what's happening in the, in the halls of government, it's lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. In the media, it's lie after cover-up and lie and cover-up, lie and cover-up. And uh, people are beginning to see this, but this is the spirit of Antichrist. This is the spirit of lawlessness. This is what we've given ourselves over to. This is exactly what the Bible has prophesied would take place, and it is setting the stage for the end of this age, the end of the church age. The, this powerful force of deception will not be lifted from anyone's eyes until they are willing to confess in total belief uh, of, of mind and heart and confess with their lips that Jesus, Yeshua, is the Messiah, has come in the flesh according to the scriptures, which are true. Those who refuse to believe the truth concerning Jesus Christ will naturally follow the lies of the spirit of Antichrist, which has been in the world working to undermine the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who has set the world free from the bondage of the lies set forth in the world by false spirits and false prophets. For almost 2,000 years, the truth of the gospel has overcome the lies of Satan and his demonic hordes, which they have fostered in pagan religion, religious rituals, folklore, and fairy tales, and the worshiping of false gods and practices. But now the world has thrown off the word of God, thrown off the truth of the gospel, and instead has joyfully embraced that which is abnormal. The spirit of Antichrist is growing by legions and will continue to work deceptively until the fifth trumpet of Revelation 9 is, 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 is carried out. Now, in Gary's cause uh, newsletter, he talks about an accelerating world agenda. Talks about the United Nations, the WHO, is seeking total control over the next pandemic. And they're planning a pandemic. That's why they're, they're so busy, and Biden has signed on to this. And this needs to be stopped. But, you know, this is not talked about in the news at all. You nope. can't find it in a Google search. Nope. You know, but it's happening. And, in fact, I was listening to a videotape, one that your wife had sent me, 
about an interview with, uh, what's her name? Uh, Bachman. Bachman, Michelle Bachman. Oh, wow. She had attended one of these things. They literally have a ministry to prevent the word from getting out and suppressing any information getting out the news media. Well, why are they doing that? Right. It's the works of darkness, right. all right? The United Nations World Health Organization is seeking total, total control because they're planning another pandemic. And by the way, this fall, right, this fall, they're planning another exercise. And just Mr. like John, you and I were talking time. before the show, who voted for these people? Nobody. We didn't vote for yeah. these people to roll over Nobody us. voted for them, no. right? Who, with the World Economic Forum, is planning a simulation exercise this fall so they can move quickly to impose their iron-fisted agenda? So they're getting out all the kinks, they're planning it. The coming global war, a military crisis of staggering proportions, must be created in order to push their one world agenda over the top. That's why those cluster bombs are going. They want this war to expand. Sure. And so they, they don't want this war to stop. Israel is now in a position where it has to make some very difficult decisions. With, the, with Iran and, and Russian military already in Syria, Israel is surrounded except for the south, and Iran has supplied Hamas, Hezbollah, and Palestinian Jihad with thousands of advanced rockets and missiles. The stage is set. It is. Israel is going to stand alone, but God is going to intervene. He's going to intervene on behalf of Israel and the children, the offspring of Israel, which is the church. He's going to rapture the church to heaven. He's going to deliver Israel. He's going to seal the 144,000. He's going to set the stage for the seven years of tribulation, just as the Bible prophesied. But Pastor David, there's coming a day, I think that God is going to shake, shake the world to its foundations. Like I was saying earlier, I was reading in Isaiah 38 and 39, and it amazes me that the Lord is going to reveal himself in some miraculous way that all the world will see him, all flesh will see him. When the sixth seal is opened up, they're hiding from him that sits on the throne. God is going to reveal himself, I believe, in a very glorious way with the rapture of the church and the deliverance of Israel. But then he's going to take the church to heaven and things are going to kind of settle down and I think the Antichrist is going to come to power and take credit for all that. And, but the world is going to be deceived. But the church isn't going to be here any longer to stop this agenda, and uh, the New World agenda will go forward. Gary had some final thoughts in one of the sections on him. This is a, a segue to what I want to get to. Look what he said. Would you read that, Pastor? Mm -hmm. It says, increasing media attention being given to UFO extraterrestrial phenomena will undoubtedly also factor into efforts to usher in the demonic New World Order. The fact that extraterrestrial activity is ramping up, along with its media coverage, is no, not a coincidence. Whatever sightings are not of earthly human origin, such as covert military operations, are of demonic origin and are apt to manifest in a more visible, tangible way at a strategic moment in furtherance of the satanic end times agenda. All right. And that's exactly when I saw this and I said, Gary's on top of it. Yeah. He sees the same thing that we're seeing as well. John MacArthur was asked about this. He also says the same thing. It's demonic activity. They're planning something. Uh, and there's a grand delusion that they are planning. Of course, in Revelation chapter 9, when the fifth trumpet is sounded, Satan is cast out of heaven. He has the keys to the bottomless pit. This is where the, these, the locusts come upon the earth. These are the demons, I believe, that are going to be accepted as aliens. This is what's being set up. If you think about it, the rapture of the church takes place. How's the world going to explain the disappearance of all these Christians? That's what, that's what this is all about. When we watch the movie put out by Gary Bates, all right, in creation.com, they had information from people that it had these so-called hallucinations, these encounters with these entities, all right? And, uh, and of course, they believe it's demonic, and it's interesting how they care about the environment, and they, are, and they are inquisitive about the rapture of the church, and so they're trying to set up a false delusional answer so when the rapture of the church takes place, they're basically going to say, oh, God took away all those bad people, right? And uh, so, uh, but this will continue until we get to the chapter 9 of the book of Revelation, the opening up of that, uh, the, the sounding of that fifth uh, trumpet and the angel sounds. And when those demons come out, then the people are going to experience a hurt and they're going to be so bad they're going to want to die, but they're going to suffer, I, I believe, on their possession of these demonic spirits for at least five months, but it's gonna be so bad they wanna die. I don't want anybody I love to experience that. What's interesting to me is when you look at the eyes of the locust and you look at the eyes of the ET, they're very similar. Yeah, and so sure. I believe all this has been set up and that there are more people that are willing to believe 
an extraterrestrial than they believe in God. Sure. And uh, these people are cunning. Uh, evolution has fallen flat on its face, quite honestly. It doesn't have the answers. And uh, as a result of that, they have seen the intelligent design, the specificity and the complexity in life and biological life forms. And so the way around is that, oh yeah, it is intelligent design, the aliens did it. So that's going to be their answer. And a lot of people are investing in that. Uh, but the Bible talks about all this stuff. But now what I have is a series of articles and uh, which shows all the activities. You have this ex-intelligence officer says government is hiding alien technology from Congress. Right? So this article is, is about uh, uh, you know, all the things that have been going on the last six years. In, in 2017, the New York Times re revealed that uh, former Senator Harry Reid had previously uh, tucked away $22 million in defense funding to investigate UFOs or UD, UD, uh, UDPs. And uh, so that article came out. But the report of this Leslie Keene and Ralph Blumenthal, part of the team that broke the Times story, gives hope of the alien optimist. In the science website, the brief, the pair described the story of a defense intelligence whistleblower, David Charles uh, Crush, who has alleged that intelligence communities hiding classified evidence uh, of intact and partial intact craft of non-human origin. It's like, come on. You know, and so I listen to people reporting as, he's a high level intelligence officer, you know, the intelligence community is there. It's like, this has got to be true. It's like, wait a minute, these are the same people Right? These are the same people, the intelligence community, that says that the Hunter laptop was, was disinformation. Right. Right? So you're going you're gonna to trust these people. These are the people that are putting it out. All these claims, they're setting the things up. Uh, and so this article goes on to talk about so this. And uh, this is the same intelligence department where 51 of its members said Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian disinformation. But people are saying, well, this is the intelligence community. An, intelli an intelligence investigation has been launched in response to this whistleblower complaint while the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence did not comment. The Pentagon cleared the information in the report. Of course they did. They want this information out there, and they're laying the groundwork for this grand deception to take place. And other people have warned about this. So it's 100% disinformation. I mean, the question would be, why are they hiding it? Yeah. Because they want it to happen so right. bad. Why would right. they hide it? Yeah, exactly. So there's, there's, they're not going to reveal that. Uh, there's, an there's another article, alien-like message sent to Earth in a test to prepare for the real thing. I read this and I thought, what? Mm -hmm. But this article goes on to talk about, to ask the question, what if aliens try to contact us? Uh, the long-standing question that now has at least been partially answered after a transmission designed to mimic correspondence from an extraterrestrial civilization made its way to Earth from Mars. Now, you got to stop for a minute and think about this. What happened when they had an exercise about the coronavirus? It, it happens, happened, right. right? Now they're having an exercise about a contact from extraterrestrial. Why? Because they're planning it. It's going to happen. Right. It's going to happen. So when I see stuff like this, it's a red flag. And folks, you need to get ready for this because it's going to happen. You know, the war of the worlds, yeah. all right? Yeah. But they're, they're, they're going to present them as our saviors. Oh, yeah. yeah. Think, you think of the technology with AI. Right. Uh, this Project Blue Beam, all these things that we know they're working on. Right. And, you know, it's even interesting in some of the movies that have come out recently, like the, one of the Spider-Man movies had these drones that could project uh, holograms, but the right. damage was real. Right. And I saw an article recently where they were talking about how they really believe that's how they're going to do this, right. almost with like holograms, but the damage will be real to the land. And Hollywood's always tipping its hand, I'm telling right. you. The devil, Satanists believe in revealing their plan because it stops the bad karma from coming back on them. So they're very subtle in how they do it, but they really do tip their hands yeah, and because by, they believe it's part of their And by wonders and signs, he'll so. deceive, deceive yeah. people. And that's what we got to tell people. Yeah. It's going to look very real. Oh, yeah. This isn't going to look like some high school play. Right. It's going to look very real. That's so like right. you said, it's very important to get right. on the side of the truth because I believe once it's happening, Pastor John, you may not have that opportunity right. if you've rejected the truth already. It's very, very dangerous to keep rejecting the truth of God. It's... It, it just forms that callus around your heart, and it gets really right. hard to accept the things of God. The more you, you know, it takes it. millions of dollars to send something like this up. For years, they were working on it and developing it. And that's what bothers me, yeah. reading us to 22 million, that Harry Reid, the millions here, even with a lot what NASA does. Right. Like, 
we've got people in our world that served in our military in our country they're homeless they right. can't let's put our money to use you know, the good use i mean the money that's yeah. our tax dollars that are getting wasted here it just that's right it, it infuriates me actually look at this slide the event also served as a general rehearsal of all the steps involved in identifying correctly processing a signal of extraterrestrial and, and intelligent origin it is not as trivial as people think they paula said nasa and esa do two-way communication with the spacecraft all the time, <laughs> but they have their own dedicated equipment. So they had to develop their own logarithm, their own signal, and everything else, and it took years <laughs> to develop that. It, right? It's like saying I make contact with Bigfoot, like right. I bang on a tree, because I know Bigfoot likes that noise. Well, how do you know that? Right. You know, this is so silly. Yeah, yeah they're setting it up. Mm. Among SETI's original trustees, Frank Drake, an American astrophysicist, who brought the disclosure about extraterrestrial life into the mainstream and co-designed, now get this, the plaques that were aboard the Pioneer and Pioneer 11. I read this and I thought, hmm, that's interesting. The probes sent into space by NASA in 1972 and 1973, <laughs> they featured a pictorial message intended for extraterrestrials that included nude female and male human bodies and a map of the solar system. So I want to I want to stop here for a minute. Yeah. So back in 1972 and 73, the most intelligent scientists we have in an attempt to design a message to super intelligent beings want to communicate it to them basically two things. Number one, where we're from, the solar system, who's sending these, these probes, and a picture of us as male and female only. So isn't that amazing that back in 1972, we had no problem depicting us as just man and woman, male and female, all right? Well, when I go to buy my vitamins at Rite Aid, or it's only male and female right. vitamins. So. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so I just thought, I said this, right, I'll that follow, follow the science. We say that concerning vaccines. Settled science when it came to an environment. In 1972-73, 50 years ago, a very prestigious group of NASA scientists sent an intelligent communication to space that said the sentient beings who sent this, sent it, were biological male and female. That settles it, folks. That's it's all settled there science. Is. That's right. It's settled Follow science. the science, right? That's right. That's right. All right. So I thought we'd, we'd just throw that out there as a caveat. Right. So now, now we've corrected everybody, and everybody knows it right. needs to go away. That's so right. Yeah. Exactly. So it's settled science. We're following <laughs> the science here at the Watcher's Report. Standard, uh, Stanford professor says aliens are 100% already on Earth, right? Living among us and have been here a long time. So prove it. Yeah, That's prove it That's what I tell me. people all the time right. when they tell me something. Prove right. it. A Stanford professor, a renowned ufologist, conf confidently uh, declared that their aliens have been here on Earth, Dr. Gary Nolan. So you're seeing people like this, and there's a physicist also that's now come out of the woodwork as well. Mm -hmm. So all of this, all this cumulative, you know, this, this uh, intelligence agency, the report by Harry Reid, the millions of dollars spent, the Times article, the military, con all of this, all of a sudden, there's a reversal. Now they want people to believe in UFOs. Why? Because they're going to use it. There's a plan. They're going to use it. And that's why we're seeing all this. When asked if he believes that aliens have visited Earth, Nolan declared, I think you can go a step further it has just it hasn't just been visited. It's been here. Uh, it's been here a long time, and it's still here. No one proclaimed aliens have been on Earth for a long time, and they are still here. Can you give me their email address? <laughs> but you know, Pastor John, they they allude to hieroglyphics and caves right. and Mayan and Aztec cultures and all. But demons have been here since the beginning right. of time. So That's of course, right. demons have been manifesting themselves. That's right. They're setting up the grand deception is what they do. And people, you need to understand this. You need to get ready for this because it's coming and uh, they're showing their hand. You know, people talk about the wall, sig uh, the wall, wall signal all the time, looking for extraterrestrial intelligence. The wall signal is that people see it on a almost a regular basis. That's the communication that's already here, Nolan told moderator Alex Colas. The New York uh, Post said the wall signal refers to a burst of radio waves, but it even talks about that scientists really believe that that was a pair of comets that put that out there, but they want to believe that it's aliens trying to communicate with us. All right, uh, it's not just my opinion. He added the National Defense Authorization Act passed last year, signed by President Biden in December. 30 pages of this establishment of an unidentified aer aerial phenomena office, well, that of course, gives it right? 
The Stanford professor defended his belief in extraterrestrials on our planet, saying, you just need to look at what your government is doing right now about it. Oh, yeah, like you can really trust them. So all this is going No one said 12 US senators have requested more information regarding UFOs. UFOlogists allege that experts are working on reverse engineering unknown crash, uh, crash, crash crafts from, uh, from outer space. Let us see the pieces, at least, you know? Right. All right. NASA, a panel studying UFO sightings, says stigma and poor data uh, pose challenges. The 16-member panel, which formed last year, presented earlier findings Wednesday in its first public meeting. A final report is expected uh, this summer. Uh, May 31st, uh, 2023 is when this took place. Uh, NASA panel talked about the unidentified aerial phenomena. Second paragraph, the panel, which was formed last year, presented earlier findings Wednesdays in a group's first public meeting and is expected to publish a final report. So NASA's even getting in on it you know, right now yeah. and giving it some legitimate uh, uh, airtime. Evans also noted that the definition of UAP, as they referred to in government uh, parlance, was recently expanded. Uh, the, the middle paragraph debates over potential UFO sightings have garnered increased attention in recent years, particularly as Congress and U.S. intelligence agencies, agencies have sought to make public more information about unidentified flying objects and all those things. Okay, we just had a lightning strike. Yeah. All right. Are things okay up there, Eric? There yes, are. they are. Okay, good deal. So interest in this is growing, Pastor, by leaps and bounds, and people are being spoon-fed this stuff. They don't know that it is all demonic, right? right? And uh, so on and on, at NASA's involved. And then there was this, this, this uh, interview that I watched. Uh, 50,000 people at that time, almost 51,000 people watched it. It was premiered on May 23rd. Uh, it's about this Ray Graves engages in a profound conversation with associate professor Matthew uh, Sidagas, I, I just crucified that name, explored the bond between unidentified anonymous phenomena and the quest to unravel the secrets of dark matter. He's studying dark matter, but he, now he's also investigating uh, these UAPs. And this guy is a physicist. Uh, he says, uh, it goes on, the article engages in profound conversation. And he goes on to talk about this professor. Here's just some of the interesting extracts. He believes that, that the existence of life is, is elsewhere is 100%. 100%, yeah. all right? Not 90%, but 100%. Oh, we agree with that, too. There are angelic, demonic, and God uh, dwelling in another realm. But can, it, uh, but can it travel long distances is another question. So. His idea is that, yes, I believe it exists, but the question of whether it can travel these long distances is another question. All right, it's a different question altogether. But isn't that what faith is, believing yeah. in what you really can't see? But right. even beyond that, you know, when the Bible talks about faith in, in Hebrews 1, it's you can't see it, but there's evidence of it. Right. They don't even have that. No. So when they talk about us being sheep and having this blind right. faith, at least we have evidence That's of our right. faith. They have no evidence. That's right. They blindly believe. That's right. And they mock us. That's right. For believing in something that we have evidence of all around right. us. That's right. You know, and I'm just amazed at that. He goes on and says, it's okay for man to no longer be the number one species. <laughs> and get this, we can learn a lot. He said, Jesus himself said that the meek or the humble would inherit the earth. Well, it's nice to know that he's willing to quote Jesus, huh? Uh, so he's saying Jesus was referring to aliens? Well, he's saying it's good for us to be humble, not to be oh, okay. number one, right? Okay. So the aliens will put us in our place, I guess. I gotcha. He appears to be open to the idea that angelic or demonic higher intelligence could at least be part of the answer, but has no credentials in that area to speak of it. All right, <laughs> so at least he does mention that. Right. All right, the major point is that now for the first time, respectable credentialed scientists are now beginning to feel comfortable to speak in public and they are getting involved in the study of UAP's UFO research. And he, Professor Matthew, credits the 2018 New York Times article on UAPs as a game changer. So that's what's happening. So the point of it is, is that little by little, they're making it more respectable, and people are jumping on. Well, at the same time, they are destroying the Bible, destroying the Word of God, destroying Israel, destroying the God of the Bible, taking down the Ten Commandments. They're destroying that, but they're propping this up. Hold on, Pastor John. They mock you and I and right. Pedro here for believing in the Bible. Why? Because it was written by who, they say? Men, right. He's claiming what is a game changer for him? Right. A what piece man, of paper, a New right. York Post written by man. a man or a woman. Right. Exactly. And again, hypocrisy. So this is the article they were, they were referring to. But now, uh, 
uh, again, Gary Bates had put out a book called Alien Intrusion, and this book covers the topic uh, really well. Gary, uh, uh, he get, Gary gets really into it. Uh, he gives a Christian perspective. Alien Intrusion, if you haven't seen this documentary on this, you need to see it. He covers all the bases. He talks with ufologists, people that were into this study who became Christians. Uh, they use the Bible to show how it's all demonic. They cover the science, how it's impossible for these beings to travel, uh, these light years to us. The energy just isn't there. It's not possible. The science isn't there. And so if they aren't aliens, then what are people seeing? It's demonic activity. Right. And one of the things he talks about there is physics. And he's very scientific in his right. approach because he wasn't a believer in Christ when he started out as That's a ufologist. Right. And the fact of the matter is if, they're being, if their ships got here, they still have to endure our physics. Right. And the way they th see things stopping and starting, if there was a human being and you or I were in there, right. we'd splatter against the That's wall right. the first time it stopped. Yeah, you can't so if violate. there is something in these things flying right. here, they have to be spirits, That's right. not, not flesh. Right. And so that's the only thing. So they make a good case. So conclusion, it was a demonic activity. Why are they interested in the rapture and concerned about the environment of the earth? And so it's a great, great video. And if you haven't seen it, you need to see that. Pastor John, so, one of the most visible supposedly UFO landings and alien coming out was in what, the mid 70s down in South Africa at that right, school. Right. And remember every child when they were interviewed individually right. said they saw the same thing and they right. said that the being never spoke a physical word right. but put in their head you have to take care of the environment. Right. Right. So this has been going on for right. a while. Yeah, the propaganda. So the demonic deception is being set up as an alien UFO event to provide cover for the missing Christians. The rapture event will coincide with the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38 and 39, Gog Magog judgment, Joel 2, 15, 32, and 3, 9 to 17. With Christians gone, the New World Order resistance is gone. This will give prominent rise to a New World leader, the political beast, the Antichrist, the false prophet with the New World Order in the West. So here's the point. Here's the point of all this. If they're doing this now, what do they think? They get made to set this up because the event of the rapture is coming. Yeah. Right? So they're setting up this up right now. That's how close, they don't know when, but they're setting, they're setting all this up. Now, the book of Revelation and all that which has been foretold in the word of God from the beginning is going to be fulfilled. We, uh, whether you believe it or not, whether you understand it or not, it does not really matter. Ignorance of that which is really happening will not protect you from that which is coming to this generation, which has enthusiastically abandoned the truth for a lie. It has nothing to do with intellect or intelligence. It is not what you know. It is who you believe and what, and what you believe. And if you do not believe that which is true and has always been true, then you will not be, ever be able to put off that which is coming. God is, and there is no other God beside him. He is true. His word is true. And everything else is a lie. The scriptures were given to us by him through the prophets of his chosen people, Israel, which the nations of the world also hate. Evolution is a lie. Man caused climate change is a lie. Wokeism is a lie. Transgenderism is a lie. And 99% of the news is a lie. People need to wake up. All right, so all this deception is coming, and people and the world is being set up. Now, I was watching a video by Lance Walnu, and I was, I was kind of upset by that. He dismisses the rapture as an exercise in escapism. And, uh, and he went on to talk about how we need to stand up now and get in the way of the globalist plans by supporting programs like his. Of course. Yeah, of course. He's got all the answers. Right. You know, and I really, I heard that and I thought, oh, come on, Lance. You know, re you really think you're going to stop this? These people are too powerful and this is too far gone. He says we can stop this. I hope he's right, but I don't see how. The problem with those who dismiss, dismiss the pre-trib rapture is that they do not believe the word of God. Confused, they're confused about the seals in Revelation 6. They do not know we are at the end of an age, the end of the church age. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, Pastor David. Yep, Matthew wrote, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, this is going so the tr we're coming into a very trying time at the end of the church age. And that's, that's what's happening. You know, in the, in the book of Daniel, 
and in the book of Revelation, chapter 10, you see this imagery of one standing up with one hand lifted up and he's holding a book and swearing to the God of heaven. And it's on one side of the river. And well, the idea of the river is that, that that's where one age is ending and another age is beginning. And when time is no more, when the seven thunders begin to speak in, in Revelation chapter 10, we are coming to the end of the church age. And we're witnessing that. We're also witnessing the setting up of the next age. That age is going to be the age of judgment. That seven year of tribulations, you know, the rising of the beast, rising up out of the sea, is that literally what we're seeing is this new world order emerging from the, from the people, from the, from the shores of the people and the technology and everything else. It's being assembled. Uh, Harari, which is Klaus Schwab's right hand man, made the statement. He said, with AI, AI can write its own Bible and AI can, can make its own religion. And he said, it will be true. Right? And so all this is taking place, and uh, all this is being set up. So the church age is coming to an end, but God is going to send his angels. And he's going to rapture his church, but he's also going to seal the 144,000, as according to Revelation chapter 6. You see the exact same thing when the, the, the four corners of the earth and, and the Revelation chapter 7, verse number 1, holding the winds of the earth that it should not blow. All this is setting up so the church age is going to end and the sixth seal is going to be that event, that snap event where, the, where God is going to say enough is enough. He's going to reveal himself in judgment. He's going to deliver Israel. He's going to deliver his church to heaven because there's no safe, safe place on earth for the church because the judgment is coming upon the whole earth. This is what's coming. I don't know the day, the hour, but it's, it's, it's happening. I'm just going to skip through this. So again, this is what's coming. The Ezekiel 38, 39, Gog, Magog war. It's going to come. It's going to be fulfilled. The nations of the world are going to come against Israel. I believe it may take place when Israel acts and destroys the bomb, uh, Iran from getting the bomb. Then maybe also when Damascus is destroyed, Isaiah chapter 17. I, I think so. Right? And, and if you look at Damascus right now, who's there? Every, Russia. Everybody. All Russia, their Syria, yeah. right? The Iranians are there. Oh, Israel boy. is surrounded except for the south. And so all this is coming. Israel is planning it. The hour is close. It's, people need to keep an eye on what's going on in Israel. One day the world is going to wake up, and I believe Israel is going to make a move. And I think with that move, China is going to make its move as well. Well, it's interesting. I believe I saw that Netanyahu was going to China. Okay. And that's the first time uh, Israel Prime Minister has been to China in a long time. And that's because he sees our presence right. being removed from that's him. That's right. So he, you know, it's amazing how you see, again, the kings of the East very involved right. Uh, right. in the end times. Right. There's Uncute. American revelation. Well, you see, we're detaching ourselves from right. Israel. I believe we're going to hit the early judgments of the tribulational yep. period. I believe you're right. And uh, so all this is taking place. And so what's going to be following that is seven years of great tribulation. The two witnesses will come in the beginning of that, and they, uh, they will lead the 144,000 into the wilderness. The Antichrist will bring forth a peace covenant for three and a half years. In the midst of that peace agreement, uh, he'll break it, uh, and there will be a broken covenant that Daniel chapter 9 talks about. Then the final 42 months will be that of Antichrist, and that's known as the Great Tribulation. It'll end in the Battle of Armageddon when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, destroys all the armies of the world with the brightness of his coming, and what follows then is going to be the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. When is it going to happen? Is it going to be the year 23 to 2030, or is it going to be the year 2029 20, to 2030? We don't know. Uh, but the, this next group of seven years is going to be very interesting. We just have to sit and watch to see how it's going to work out. But I'm telling you, Pastor David, it's set. The stage is set like it's never been before. It surely is. And uh, I really do believe this fall a lot of this stuff is going to be coming our way. Uh, Matthew 24 says, 32, we need to learn the parable of a fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Truly I say to you, this generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So this generation, my generation, our generation has seen all these signs. Israel, in 1948, it became a nation again. And that's when the ball really started rolling. And by the way, that's when all the UFO activity started it was 1948 as well. That's right. It's really kind of. Yeah. It was the demise of our country started right. after that time, right. too, with getting into the Korean War, the Vietnam right. War, this war in the Middle right. East. We haven't won 
right. truly a war right. since that time. And, uh, and I believe that was the beginning of the process of God raising up the light of Israel and extinguishing the light of America. That's right. And I am not one of these ones that believes America will be great in the end times nope. because God is extinguishing our light. That's right. And, uh, you know, the judgment of God. So, but concerning the day and hour, uh, no one will ever know, not the angels in heaven, but the Father only. But Eli tells us there will be sight. But he tells us it will be like in the days of Noah. And he tells us to watch, therefore, for, for you know not what the hour, but we're supposed to watch. Yeah. And that's what the watcher's report is all about. We're here, we're watching, we're saying the time is at hand. We don't know the day or the hour, but boy, it is rapidly approaching. And more and more people are talking about uh, the things that are happening, and they see uh, how the stage is being set like never before uh, for the return, the return of Christ. Yeah. So There's a lot of comparisons to the days of Noah, and I know people are making them, but I really think this AI has a lot to do, cloning has a lot to do with yes. man playing yep. God. And, and That's right. The reason God had to really bring the flood upon the earth was, yeah, sin was continual and every man's mind was continually wicked and evil, but the Nephilim and this mixing of breeds, right. You know, right. and I think that's what Satan is actually doing with AI. I mean, mm -hmm. there have been people that have Google Chat GBT, and it's they've asked them, "Are you demonic?" And it's like, "Yeah, we are." I mean, demons, I think, are are involved oh, in this. Oh yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, yeah. how does a machine think for itself, Pastor John? <laughs> I, I, look, I'm not a smart person, but that yeah. makes me a little leery to think yeah. that there's a machine that can start to adapt and think yeah. for itself without some kind of spiritual help. There, there's no doubt about it. You know, there was an article in here, and I want to I want to read this. I don't know if I read this before, but. Uh, there's, uh, Gary talks about AI. There's an article here, an investigation that was that was done by an Owen Rempel. And uh, in this, in the investigation, he prompted AI. He said, can you write me a verse that sounds like the Bible and is not? Right? And here's what the AI wrote. Very interesting. Uh, response. But he did speak unto them, saying, be not afraid, for I bring you good tidings of great joy. Right? For in this very hour, a new error is dawning, and the old way shall pass away. Mm. Therefore, let all those who have ears to hear heed my words and prepare for the coming of a new age. Mm. Right? And the people did listen, and they were filled with hope and wonder, for they knew that the future was bright and full of promise. Three times in here, AI is talking about a new age coming. But the new age it is talking about is not the one that yeah. Christ is talking about. It's the agenda of the new world order. Scary. I mean, it's really incredible. And people will eat it up. Yeah, yeah. They, they would eat it yeah. up. So, so we're there. So you're right. Uh, Elon Musk was being interviewed and talking about this brain chip that he's developing. And he made a statement, and I, I, my jaw dropped, that here's this intelligent man, you know, and he's saying, well, look it. If you can't beat them, you might as well join them. In other words, this is too big. Right. You're not going to stop it. Right. So you might as well try to benefit from it. And you've got to make a decision. Are you going to be on this side or that side of it? And what they're talking about is basically with this brain chip is that you're going to tap in and basically have all this knowledge and all this information instantaneously available. You don't need to go to school. You'll know everything you need to know. It's kind of like... Uh, what was that movie, The Matrix? Yeah. You dial it in, yeah. you know, and it's like, oh, I need to, I need to fly this helicopter and just dial it in, you know. But it's just goofy. It, but they actually believe this stuff, and the thing about it is, is that you plug into the AI. That means the AI is plugged into you, sure. and so they ultimate control. Do you, you put AI alongside with the digital currency, facial recognition, and all the technology that's going on, tracking. And they've, they've, they've got the corral closed. Mm -hmm. This is what they want to do. For years, people have been putting their data information on Facebook, YouTube, you name it, Twitter. TikTok. They've been gathering, gathering this, and this generation has naively put this all out there. They've got it. And they know who you are. They know where you're at and all this. The phone is already a part of that. We're there already. Sure. And so all this technology is... Is they're using it to create gods out of us and gods out of themselves, and ultimately they're going to be the, the, the superior gods controlling the little gods. And uh, what did Klaus Schwab say? Say, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. <laughs> really. What does, that, what does that really mean? So we are to watch. That means he'll be happier because right? he'll own it all. So we, so we have to watch because uh, all these things, things are happening. And, uh, 
and so this grand illusion is coming. All the, sta the stage is being set. It's just a matter of time. And the other thing, if you look on the political realm with all the truth is coming out, these people are getting desperate. They are, the, the truth is coming out, and so they are going to have to do something very desperate. And they're, they're capable of doing it, anything. Sure whether it's going to be start World War III, introduce another pandemic, or an alien invasion, they're going to do it. They're prepared to do it, and uh, they believe they can control it all, and they can convince people of whatever they want to convince them of. Yeah, I mean, I remember reading a little handbook in the 70s about their agenda, right? and they refer to themselves always as a phoenix. Well, a phoenix rises from what? Ashes. Ashes, right. So they have to create the ashes to right. rise from, and right. that's what's coming. Yeah, they want to destroy it. And of course, all this stuff that they're doing is, and it, it is nonsense. It is irrational, and they know that, and it's deliberate, because they're pitting one group against the other, and divide and conquer. That's, that is the methodology of the devil. Mm -hmm. they're, they're working in darkness, and, uh, and so don't fall for the trap. They're trying to get people to, to start a civil war so they can institute martial law, and, and in, in, institute draconian laws to take every, everything away from you and uh, even imprison people. Uh, and so that's where we're at, and we need to be praying. Uh, and the only one who can save us now is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I believe. Yeah, I know you have talked about some people that you know and uh, that believe this great revival is coming, Pastor yeah. John, but where is it coming from? It, it's, we're not evolution Christians. We believe there has to be something to create something. Right. Where is it coming from? Uh -huh. I, I mean... You, you, I see how diluted it is now, as we talked about, and you know, think about when the rapture does happen and the salt, the preservatives right. are removed. Right. How wicked and yep. evil this world is going to be, and, yep. and how much control they have now, the, the wicked rulers over us. It's full on at that point. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I talk to people that say, well, I hear what you're saying, and I'll believe it when it's happening. No, well, you yeah. will not. You yeah. will not stand up for Christ when they're saying you can't buy food for your family. It's not going to happen. That's right. I heard a local announcer uh, talk show, uh, ask the question, where's the pastors? Where's the priests? Where's the ministers at? How come they're not speaking to this? Well, excuse me, Some are. you and I have been for years. For years. And, and the reason why a lot of pastors aren't speaking about it is because people will leave the church. People have left my church. Sure. You know, we have showed the movies Agenda 1, Agenda 2, Dinesh D'Souza, and others, trying to warn people years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, we tried to warn people. We put advertising, we spent hundreds of dollars advertising alien intrusion and all this, and a handful of people would show up. And so they're looking for entertainment. They're not looking for the truth. Christians will scoff at you. Well, now it's here. And so the problem is, is not so much the pastor, it's the people. The people are in control of the churches. The people are dictating what they want church to be, and there are far too many pastors that will give them what they want rather than what they need. And so churches like yours and mine are becoming a dying breed because we, we won't compromise the truth. We're going to give people what they need to hear, but if people don't support this ministry, it's going to go away. Your ministry is going to go away if people don't support it. Because, yes, we do need money to stay on the air. We do need money to live. And, uh, and if people aren't going to support these ministries, then someday this ministry may close up. Uh, and that's, but we're, we're, we'll close up, though, before we compromise the Word no, of God. You know, and the same for you. I yeah. know that. Final thoughts, Pastor? Well, I mean, everything we're saying here tonight, again, it's just we're, we're trying to encourage people. We're not here to scare anybody. We're not, no. You can't scare people into heaven. Plenty of quip. But, you know, I, I, I have to say, uh, I mentioned we went to our local college, UMES. It's predominantly a black college, 90-some percent easily. And, you know, there was 10 white people out there yesterday, and we're sharing the gospel and meeting and greeting, giving things, you know, that we had bought. And it was a little discouraging today as our van went down there to see if anybody wanted to come to church that they got on and go, oh, this is the wrong church. This is the white church. Huh. And it, I know it upset Scott, who was driving the van, and Karen, his wife, that was on the van. And it, it was, it's discouraging to hear that right? Um, because there is this divide in our world, and it, and it has crept into the church, and it's still such a segregated hour right? Uh, Sunday morning. And it's really sad. It's not about which church I can get the Bible taught at or, or the truth right. at. It's about color. Entertainment. Uh, entertainment. You right. know, the church they were going through has a rock band and, right. and all that stuff. And it's sad. You know, even when we were out there yesterday, we, we must have talked to at least, it's summer school, so they're not in full on, but talked to still about 100 young men and women out there. Not one of them asked what our doctrine is. Right. It, it's just, it's not yeah. a thought, yeah. you know, and it's sad. 
and you hope you're doing some good by just putting a gospel track in their hand, mm -hmm. having a conversation, showing them the love of God. Even the ones that say, no, get out of my face. We'll have a good school year. We're praying for you. Just trying to show right. them that there is no color to the truth. Right. You know, and, that's, and right. that's, I hate to say it, since the, the age of Barack Obama and George Bush and, and this to where we're at today, right. it's done nothing but promote division. And right. it has made it so it's difficult. Been deliberate. It's been deliberate. The devil yeah. has created such an environment out here. Yeah. It's hard for a white person to share the gospel with a black person, or vice versa. Right. It's just, it's really, it's disheartening. Right. But we have to just do what's right in God's That's eyes right. and still go about doing it. So right. we just want to encourage people. Just, you can't save the world. You're not going to bring, you're not going to bring an end, end to this division or segregation. Right. But just try to reach out one. Just that try one. to reach out That's one. That's it. Just yeah. that one. Just that one. Reach yeah. that neighbor. Reach that uh, that cousin, that friend, the father, the mother, whoever your coworker. Reach that one. Right. And uh, and as a firebrand snatched from the fire, right. as the Bible says. And that's all we need to do. You know, Jesus said we're supposed to be the light. We're supposed to be the salt. We can't turn our back. You know, these people that are believing a lie and propagating a lie, they need Jesus. Yeah. You know, Jesus is the answer. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And the only way that they're going to see the truth is if they see the true Jesus. And so we need to ask God to work. We need to leave in the power of prayer. You know, we come together on Wednesday nights. We pray for people. And we believe that God can do a work. And so we need to do all we can. You know, God is making it very clear. He's giving us a very clear choice, good and evil. He's allowing the evil to be seen. Uh, and so a very clear choice. And so people are making the wrong choice, though. Yeah. Uh, and no choice is a choice, yeah. right, as well. Yeah, sure. And so if you don't yeah. choose Jesus, then you the default. You, you default to the devil yeah. and to the lies of the world. And I just want to say real quickly, too, you know, as a church, sometimes it's easy to become discouraged, or as a Christian, mm -hmm. get discouraged, uh, even with what we've gone through recently, like at the campus. And But I think it's, instead of, like, demonizing people, right. even if we don't speak it, we, we kind of do in our minds and our hearts a little bit, you know, the LGBTQ2 right. community, or Q, whatever their numbers are, letters, that community, you know, the racism, all the divide. But right. we really need to say, look, that's our mission field. That's right. Right? Like, that's, we don't. We, right. we, we, we congregate weekly to encourage and learn. Christ our, our died mission, for them. The harvest, like when the Lord told us in John 4, he wasn't in the temple and told his look out. The, he was out in the marketplace and look right. at all those people out there. That, that's the right. harvest, and they're ready. And like I told my church before we went out there, you might have to talk to 100 and get 100 projections to meet that one that's right. ready. So that's right. the harvest is always ripe. There is always people out here, right. the Lord tells us, that that's are right. ready to be plucked right. into the kingdom of God. But Can't give up. as Paul said, how are they going to hear without a preacher? That's right. And that's really the problem today. Right. Uh, maybe 2% we, we read in studies actively share the gospel, right. and I don't even think I believe it's 2%, yeah. quite honestly. Yeah. Would you close in prayer? Yes. So Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. And Father, we, we never ever want to come across as doomsdayers or negative, Lord, but Father, we live in a real world and real things are happening and it is our job to report them. And Father, we know in Scripture the watchmen are never never loved people. In fact, you warned Ezekiel, look, warn them. They won't listen, but still warn them. And it's a tough job, so we covet your prayers. We know many don't listen, but uh, many do uh, despise us for it, but we are just the messengers. And as Pastor John said, whether you believe it or not, it doesn't change the fact of what's coming. And all we want to do is encourage you is to get on the winning side, get on the right side, get on the side of Jesus Christ, get on the side of truth. And um, the Lord promises victory. He doesn't promise it'll be easy, but he does promise victory. So, Father, we pray for the one here tonight that may not um, know you personally. Father, we pray before it's eternally too late. Uh, I would encourage you even before you go to bed tonight that you would just really take a hard look at yourself and see yourself as a sinner, a lawbreaker before God. Uh, Humble yourself and realize that you are not perfect, that you've committed at least one sin against a holy God. And because of that one sin, it, it would stop you from getting to heaven. And the Bible is very clear. We can't make it to heaven. We fall short. We're born into that. We're born into sin. So God brought heaven down in the person of Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. He lived amongst us, set an example, and went to the cross. His mission was to die on a cross for you. And he shed his perfect sinless blood to pay for every sin you've ever committed, whether it be one or one billion. His blood covers them all. And the Bible says where sin abounds, God's grace abounds even more. So we pray, and you can say a prayer in your own words. I don't lead people in false conversions. But if you're feeling that conviction of heart, if you're feeling that godly sorrow over the sin in your life, I encourage you, confess it to the Lord. Confess your sin to him and receive his payment on the cross as payment of your sins. And then get in a good Bible teaching church. The Bible says, you know, you have to be growing in your grace and your knowledge uh, 
of, in his word, and I just encourage you uh, to do that. I also want to encourage those that say, I am saved. Uh, I encourage you to be also still continually, every day, repenting and growing in your knowledge and your grace of Jesus Christ, and, and support your pastors and your good Bible teaching churches. If you're in a church where the Bible's not being taught, you're wasting your time. Get out of it and find a church where the Bible's being taught. Uh, Father, I pray for the encouragement of Bible teaching pastors and their wives and their families, their congregants. There are many out here still doing it right, and they are fighting the good fight. It is not just Pastor John and me, but there are many out here uh, truly doing their best to stick to your word, teach it, and uh, Father. But they are the churches that seem to be struggling right now, so we certainly pray for them, pray for their provision. And our missionaries as well that are out fighting this, this good fight of faith as well out on the mission fields, Lord. We just pray for their protection. Um, we pray for their provision. And I always pray for them to see some fruit for all their hard work. So just be with them as well. Pray for this world, Lord. We just pray for everything that's going on still in Russia and Ukraine, that this war looks like it has no end. Um, Father, we pray for the people of Taiwan who are threatened daily, the people in Israel who are threatened daily um, through violence and, and bloodshed. We just pray for these innocent people. It, it's so sad what goes on in our world. Pray for our leaders, Lord, that rule over us here in America. Father, we um, may not like what is... Uh, ruling over us, Lord, but it's what our country deserves at this moment. But, Father, we pray for their salvation, that they would turn their wicked, evil hearts to you before it's eternally too late. So, Father, just be with us as we come boldly into your throne room uh, as beggars at this moment, Lord. But we have the confidence to know that you hear our prayers. And, uh, Father, we know that you will act in our faith. And we pray these things. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor David. And thank you for watching the Watcher's Report. Remember, you can support this ministry. We need your support. We're going to keep going. Uh, we live in troublesome times and you know, high inflation and everything else, and uh, we need to pay the bills. And so if you can help us out, the Lord would uh, cause you to send a check or go online and, and uh, support us that way. We would appreciate it very much. Uh, keep trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, and God's word is going to be fulfilled. And, you know, the Bible tells us in uh, Isaiah chapter 40 that all, grass is, all flesh is as grass. But the Word of God, it, can, it lasts forever and continues and has no end. And so uh, invest in the Word of God, stand on the Word of God, and you can't go wrong. It's all yours, Eric. Take it away. The Watcher's Report Donate to support this ministry Go to www.fbcberlin.org And click on the Give button Select The Watcher's Report Email your questions to The Watcher's Report at MediacomBB.net Watch us on BoxCast.tv On Roku, Apple Play, Amazon Platforms Search for Faith Baptist Church And select The Watcher's Report channel Watch us at www.fbcberlin.org Click on the gold live stream button. Remember to keep looking and watching for His coming. To God be the glory.